Alright, Eric's got loose and starting to move aft. See that. Herc is clear of the stern. Smart. Atalante in the water. Down. Sebastian. Yes. Is this collection sheet still valid? For the most part, yes. Okay. Um, I think that there should be some checks on there of which ones we have. Okay. Mahalo. Yeah, and I think it's okay. I think this will all start once they turn the camera on. In reading, in reading the readme that I did not read before <laughs> asking. Copy. Yep. Uh, I backer. I turned the camera on about a minute ago. It takes a couple minutes for it to spin up though yeah i know whereas i haven't been on a launch before up here so i didn't know what it what was, was doing and then i didn't read oh, the back row i didn't read the thing that explains it until i'd already panicked
bridge, Winch. Go ahead. Break, break, van bridge. Oh, man, break, break, uh, van winch. In here. All stop five zero meters, are you ready for control? For control. Enabled. Copy that, thank you. Good morning, everyone. It looks like we are all settled in and ready to start with some blue water this morning. Can y'all hear me okay? A little quiet yeah. for me. A little quiet? Mm. I'm not sure that I hear you on at all. Yeah, we'll get it sorted here. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> like I can hear you next to me, so I wasn't sure <laughs> which which way it was coming in.
Morning, Miss Tori. Good morning. Is that better? That's a lot better. Yay. Yay. Thank you, Ed and Jaina. All right. Four to eight watch. This is our first blue water um, yeah. descending that we've done together. It's special. That's a first, yeah? On yeah. This match. <laughs> <laughs> I'm on my last piece of lumby um, history. Oh, yeah? Yes. Hannah jumped right into it this morning. I sure did. I love it. I cannot believe y'all are still fighting for federal recognition. That is insane. Yes, it is a long, oh my gosh. long story. <laughs> there are uh, tribes in Washington state still working to get recognized That's as well. Crazy. Yes, it's not an uncommon um, story for a lot of peoples. Um, there are, there's only one state recognized tribe in North Carolina. Um, and then there's about seven or eight of us that are, sorry, one federally recognized tribe, and then about seven or eight of us that are state recognized. And there are some groups that do not have that state recognition even. That is so insane. Yes. And for viewers who maybe are confused about what we just jumped into talking about, let's introduce ourselves. Yeah. And then Sorry. we will <laughs> begin. That's okay, Hannah. I love your excitement. Okay. I, I was... My jaw dropped. <laughs> All right, so for our introductions this morning, we can do our usual, you know, name, role, where you're from, and then I figured we'd do something easy. Favorite breakfast cereal. Oh, so that's easy. Thought so. I hoped it would be. Breakfast cereal. Mm -hmm. That's a hotly debated topic. I think we are already. It's a cool looking map. I'm excited. <laughs> Do you know? All right, I will begin with the introduction. So hello, everyone. Um, my name is Tori Hunt. I am on science communications for the 4 to 8 watch. And when I'm not sailing, I'm a high school science teacher from North Carolina. I will actually get to talk to my fourth period today during the ship to shore at some point during our watch. <gasps> what was that? Was that squidding? That was a squidding game. Not black? Um, and my favorite breakfast cereal is Lucky Charms. All right, Malia, your turn. Okay, that's a great one. Okay, so aloha kakahiaka. Good morning to everybody. Um, my name is Malia Evans. Um, I live in um, Makaha in Waianae. Um, I am the resource manager and um, educator um, on board Nautilus. And my, my former favorite breakfast cereal, because I try to avoid them at all costs nowadays, <laughs> is Captain Crunch. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so good. I like that. And former because you don't eat it often. Not right there you with you on the Captain Crunch. <laughs> uh, it's just the roof of my mouth can't take it anymore. Oh, yeah. It just stuck <laughs> in my teeth. That's why it's former. Oh. <laughs> they're, uh, I don't know if they're still around. Planet Hollywood? Is that still around? Or maybe, yes, yeah, Planet Hollywood. Mm -hmm. had a dish where they smashed up Captain Crunch and then encrusted a chicken breast oh, with it. Man. That sounds like <laughs> diabetes inducing. <laughs> so good. Wow. Ed, do you want to just go ahead and introduce yourself? Uh, sure. My name's great. Ed. I'm over here at Video. I'm just coming on watch after our video engineering intern, Jaina, got the RVs in the water for us and uh, getting all set up over here. Uh, and what favorite breakfast cereal? I'm all aboard the Captain Crunch, but I'm just not a. Although the, what do I do now? Uh, Have that you been hun any honey wheat here? stuff? No, no, no cereal at all. Uh, yeah, I'm usually light breakfast, like mm -hmm. maybe a bagel uh, or oatmeal in the winter. Sometimes usually take our, well, in the winter I take our dog to a dog park, so might swing by somewhere and get something on the way home too. Been known to happen. <laughs> That's fair. Uh, although I am from Philadelphia, so a good uh, Philly breakfast, maybe even with some scrapple. And let's throw a little dog info on there. Could you introduce us to your dog? Uh, my dog's uh, uh, Arlo. Arlo is a two-year-old 
Blue Healer uh, Chow Mix rescued. Uh, Arlo was found uh, in East West Texas, I think, uh, roaming the streets by a lovely lady named Courtney, who coaxed him after a lot of time into her car and connected him with the rescue. And then she uh, uh, fostered him for, you know, six weeks or so before he got sent on his way and was uh, nice enough to send along a little note saying, hey, I want to know where this dog ends up and that he's okay. Right. And so uh, for two years now, uh, we stay in touch with Courtney and give her little updates on how Arlo is doing. Arlo came with that name and we didn't want to add to his <laughs> traumatic start, uh, so we just left it. Uh, but he's a working dog, so he goes to the dog park for one hour every day. <laughs> I love that for him. Nice. Thanks, Ed. Yep. Um, okay, I think, Mike, it looks like you're back with us. Yes, I'm back. Hey, everyone. Uh, Mike Brennan. I'm a maritime archaeologist with Search Inc. Um, and I'm the co-lead scientist for this expedition and watch leader for this watch. Um, my favorite cereal is Crack on Oat Bran. Uh, and as well as one that they don't make anymore, they haven't made since the 90s, called tri Triples. It was like a slightly sweet um, like Rice Krispies, but there were three different types. And we, we had it, my brothers and I had it a lot when we did a family trip to Disney World when you were in high school. So uh, kind of has memories, but yeah, they don't make it anywhere. You can look it up. You can see the box online, but you can't find it anymore. You said triples? Triples, yeah. Uh, but yeah, uh, in terms of ones that they make, oh. you should add cereal after that, otherwise you're just going <laughs> to get it off. There's stop. triples. Yeah, okay, triple Robert. play. <laughs> Hannah. Yeah, hi, I'm Hannah Parody. I am a geologist and part of the science team. I'm a grad student at California State University, Long Beach, and this is my first time on the Nautilus. And my favorite cereal is Life Cereal. It's so good. Cinnamon Life, life is, is really good. good. Life, I, I prefer the plain, but sometimes I accidentally buy the cinnamon, <laughs> and I'm also okay with that. <laughs> it's good too. But yeah, that's my favorite cereal. Sometimes I have, like, you're completely off your sugar high when you're at the grocery store and not thinking you need to buy cinnamon. Uh, yeah, exactly. <laughs> like, the grocery store, I go to the grocery store when I run out of life cereal. And yeah. then, like, time oh to gosh. go. Oh, gosh. And, and we know that you probably haven't eaten in a while, so you're just, like, zombie <laughs> going for the cereal. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, my grocery store runs revolve around running out of <laughs> cereal, life cereal. Or milk for your cereal. Actually, I have oat milk, oh, okay. so it has a very long Shelf expiration. Yeah, so yes. you just have a whole bunch. Yes. Yeah, that's smart. Well, no, I don't have a whole bunch. I, I buy one at a time. Oh, well. Well, <laughs> that's what's usually, your point. The thing is, like, if I run out of milk, that doesn't mean I'm going to buy cereal with it, life cereal with it. But you could go to the grocery store because of that. Oh. Yes, I could. Okay. Do you but use usually it would still depend on running out of life cereal. Okay. Got Do it. you use your oat milk for anything else or is it just cereal? Uh, no, it's just there for life cereal. Okay. So good. Sebastian. Hi everyone, I'm Sebastian Martinez. I'm an undergraduate researcher at University of Hawaii at Manoa. Um, I am a dialoguer here on the Nautilus. Um, my favorite cereal before I started forgoing cereal oh. was um, Reese's Puffs. Oh, that sounds good. I haven't had those. Those commercials were amazing. <laughs> <laughs> yes, they were. Reese's has their marketing on game, like, on point. Yes. I love those commercials. Nice. Thanks, Sebastian. Of course. Derek, you ready for an introduction? No. What about Jake, maybe? Yeah, so when I was in port, I got I went to Hawaiian Discount Supplements and Ooh. got this protein powder that has Fruit Loops in it, <laughs> and what? it is fantastic. Huh. Um, so I've been having that every day. So um, his, his, his brain's on Fruit Loops, even though he hasn't yep. had Fruit Loops. Yeah. yeah. And then uh, besides that, I've also I also like uh, CTC Cinnamon Toast Crunch. <laughs> CTC. Uh, you know you love a cereal enough if you've got it down to initials. <laughs> yeah. That's awesome. I, I haven't thought about calling Craglin up here in C O B. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. 
Tito, what about you? Oh, Tito Calacious, uh, Atalanta pilot, usually a Hui uh, employee back in Woods Hole. Uh, I take breakfast a little bit more serious than that. <laughs> <laughs> and don't enjoy cereal. Ever yeah. have? No, I, oh, it wasn't wow. a really a fa it wasn't a family thing. Oh wow! Yeah. I like a big breakfast, like uh, uh, like in Ireland in the morning. That's a great way to start a day. I usually skip lunch though, but not yeah, I mean, I'm an early riser yeah. in the you know, oh. bowl of fruit and maybe a couple crepes or. Mm. Yeah, I hit my stride once the sun's warm, like two o'clock. <laughs> Well, so I'm, I'm going to call it a full meal by the time we get out of here, four hours after, yeah. or five hours after <laughs> waking up. <laughs> yeah, that's where I'm most productive. So on, on the ship they have cereal, but only a, a couple of different types. And I started doing this years ago um, when I was up like at, for the 4 a.m. watch. Um, it used to be cornflakes, but now they don't have that stuff. So you do it with their wheat. I don't know if it's Wheaties or just wheat flakes or whatever, but I, I get a bowl of cereal, I put a a large uh, dollop of peanut butter on it and then the milk and then I eat the peanut butter with the cereal. Have you been doing that every morning? No, no, no. Oh. I've just been doing that. Um, well, I did it yesterday because I slept through lunch. Ah. Yeah, I don't get up for lunch. <laughs> Actually, even if I'm up, I don't have lunch. I skip lunch. Okay, yeah. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I've been feeling recently like the three meals a day are a little much. Just because there's so much food at all times. And they're crammed into a short yeah, part of it's the like, day. Yeah, the, the dinner at 5 o'clock is a little um, little early. You know, after about four or five days, I started skipping lunch. Yeah, yeah. okay. Yeah, especially in the summer. I like a, you know, 7.30 p.m., 8 o'clock dinner or something. But. Oh, I know. I, so that act, I actually skipped dinner, too, because I'd eaten this, I was starving because I didn't have lunch, so I ate the cereal, and then I wasn't hungry for dinner. <laughs> So I, I I need to figure out this timing thing. Would you do cereal and cookie time? Well, cookie time doesn't count as eating. Okay. So well, I, yes. I justify a cookie because I skipped lunch. <laughs> <laughs> well, I was telling cookies. I think I was telling Tito yesterday. Maybe, maybe as someone else, uh, I go and I'm, I try and be good, so I have half a cookie, twice. Because <laughs> I walk by, you know, 20 minutes later. And the other half is still there. Yeah, like, well, well, somebody's got to eat, somebody's yeah. gotta eat yeah. that. Yeah. <laughs> Might as well be me. <laughs> Taking twice. one for the team right here. <laughs> All right, I'll make sure to grab your half cookie so you Yeah, can there you too. go. Yeah. You're welcome. I might just take half of another one. <laughs> you don't know. Goodness. I've been enjoying the cookies really at funny. breakfast. The what? Cookies yeah. at breakfast. Oh, yeah. absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> I, I do. I do. I sure do that. So you grab the cookies in the afternoon and then stash them for the next morning? <laughs> oh, no, 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 oh, no, 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 no. I grab the cookies in the morning. Sometimes there are cookies oh, at breakfast. Really? Sometimes. Yeah. Yes. Sugar cookies, I think, is oh, what I've seen. Yes, yeah. They yeah. taste like they're just sugar and butter, it's maybe a little flour. They're so good. Yeah. <laughs> it's absolute, that sounds I keep amazing. On, they're delicious, but I keep on thinking that they're going to be peanut butter cookies and get excited, and they're not. Okay, well, I'm so happy with the Well, sugar. now that in three weeks they haven't made peanut butter cookies, I think <laughs> the expectation can, can drop. Yes. I, also, sugar cookies are better than peanut butter cookies. Yeah, I don't I really like slander. peanut butter cookies. <laughs> I, love yeah, I like making controversial statements. Yeah. <laughs> I have a controversial statement. Don't say that mushroom thing again. Don't say the mushrooms. I could go without breakfast being a thing. Oh my gosh, you're crazy. <laughs> I like, never have had those mushrooms then. Well, mushrooms are a savory dish that's served at all meals. Um, <laughs> um, whenever I have the option, usually I, I will eat leftovers before I make breakfast. What? I'd rather have bre leftovers from lunch Do or you dinner. Do you enjoy than like, happiness like, at all? Like eggs and bacon? Morning? Uncivilized. I could, I, could, I could live without it. Oh my gosh. I could have That's it. So Can I have your breakfast? I could have breakfast three meals a day and be happy. <laughs> yep. Oh, oh, yeah. Breakfast for dinner is the best. I, Great. I am genuinely disappointed when it's breakfast for dinner. So, if you, <laughs> my God. <laughs> You're crazy. I'm making enemies. Like, <laughs> no, I'm willing to bet they're in the chat, too. They're, they're, they have pitchforks and torches. <laughs> so, if we had breakfast for dinner here on the ship, what would you do? I would eat it because it's free food and I'm a college student. <laughs> but 
What would I you would get prefer to a regular eat? dinner. What? What would you get to eat? Probably just bacon and eggs. Maybe fruit. That's crazy. <laughs> I, I feel it's controversial. Really what motivates me out of bed in the morning. I'm not even joking. The idea of life cereal just like gets gets me right up. And it gives you life. Yes, literally. And then hey, what's I either make around pancakes by the too. I like make six pancakes. That's the uh, optode cover. Usually you tuck it in, but I don't. I think Dan just threw it off. You like my mom. Yeah, he did that the other day too. Sebastian, you actually have some supporters in the chat. They're saying leftover pizza and leftover lasagna. Yes, those are like the best thing. I'll, I'll eat leftover pizza. Leftover pizza is a pretty good breakfast, especially in the air fryer. No, cold. 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 Uh, it's been a long time since I was in that state in the <laughs> yeah, morning. Same. Is that the best way to reheat pizza? In the air fryer? Uh, it's faster. Best way so, to reheat pizza yeah. is in the refrigerator. <laughs> in the mouth. <laughs> You know, Mike, I have to agree with you there. I can't eat it cold. I, cold I just don't go. want to no. take the time to warm it up. You know, one thing in California that they don't have, that they have in Louisiana, concerning breakfast is Waffle House. Uh, uh, yeah. I, I think am so upset. That my dad is taking my siblings to Waffle House tonight. He's been talking oh about God. it. Oh, that's cool. For but a little bit. He's excited. I've only been to Waffle House once because they do not have them in Washington. No, they don't have, well... They're not on the West Coast. It's really yeah. upsetting. It's but really you can upsetting. get, like, huevos rancheros yeah. somewhere that's... You'll, I, don't, I don't know I if don't you... I don't even know what that is. Oh, my gosh. You... <laughs> you have a whole part of uh, uh, Southern California to discover. And, uh... If it's breakfast food, then I'd probably it's Yeah, it's down. like a, a Mexican-themed... Yeah. Uh, breakfast. What is it called? Huevos rancheros. Thank you. What? H-U-E... Are the ranchers AOS. Eggs. it's eggs huevos work vos yates ranch, er uh, ranch arrows are you sure you can spell Russian. it like chana cops yeah. no, <laughs> can i get the triclops oh i spelled it wrong it's fine she got uh, it she got there anyway can i get the tina cops <laughs> triceratops 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 oh huevos rancheros i thought there was an r in it what about um, Huddle House? Where are those at? I remember Huddle, Huddle House? House. I think I've only been to one once. I don't. I've they're never not. Heard of them. I've never they're heard of that either. either. They're not. It's not as great as Waffle House, in my opinion. <laughs> but Waffle I know House they exist. Fantastic. I just love that Waffle House makes anything into hash browns. Yeah. Just anything. My sister and brother love the hash browns. So this is gonna be. Why does uh, it sound like it's like a shelter from bombs? Huh? What? Huddle House. Jeez. <laughs> oh, That's dark. <laughs> No, but there is a disturbing, uh, I don't know, maybe it's just where I would see them at. A uh, number of times I see an ambulance at Waffle House. <laughs> yeah. Isn't like Waffle House known also for dark. throwing down, though? Yeah. Known yeah. for what? Yeah. Throwing down. They'll, they'll give it right back to you. I don't know. There's eight in Louise. There are eight puddle houses in Louisiana. Oh, they're all in northern Louisiana. Okay. Let's see. They don't even have any. There's seven in Florida. Weird. Let's see where they are. They're probably in Jacksonville. I just don't know. Uh, I have no, no idea where no, they are. Not. Oh, Yulee's near. Yulee and Lake City are near Jacksonville, but not in Jacksonville. Okay. <laughs> okay now I feel better that I haven't seen them in Louisiana because northern Louisiana is like just how yep. northern California is like its own thing. Definitely so not in California. Louisiana. 17 in Mississippi. <laughs> <laughs> that must be where they started. Crazy. I haven't been to like any of these places in Mississippi. That's funny. What's, where is there the most? Tennessee is Alabama. 17. Oh yeah, oh yeah. <laughs> Alabama and Kentucky. There's one in Gulf Shores. <laughs> 37 in Alabama. There's, do you see Huntsville on that list? Oh, uh, Gulf you know. Shores. That's well, it's, it's by county, so it's... Oh. Kind of awkward. Uh, Gulf Shores is the town we went to Mardi Gras. That was it. Mm-hmm. Gulf Shores is where we, uh, 
have a beach house. We were in Gulfport, and we connected with our colleagues from the Okeanos Explorer and Gulf Shores for Mardi Gras. Yeah, Nautilus has spent some time in Gulfport. That's really? Wild. Yep. Mm. Uh, when we were in the Gulf, that's where yeah. it was uh, stationed. Met, I met Flo, flew there a couple of times. And yeah. uh, I lived 45 minutes from Gulfport, and they had a oh, water okay. park, and I would go there in the summer. It was so much fun. And also, we would go there for soccer games. Parked out of uh, Galveston and Pascagoula, Tampa. Gulfport. I think that's about all of them. That's interesting that you went to Gulfport for Mardi Gras. No, we went to Gulf Shores. Gulf Sh even that's interesting too. That was <laughs> that's uh, well, interesting too. Well, that's even more. We had shipmates and our colleagues in Pascagoula. We were in Gulfport, so it was a nice in-between spot to meet. Mm. Uh, we weren't there for Mardi Gras. Oh, okay. <laughs> I was like, that <laughs> is so. I know Alabama claims, well, it is the place where Mardi Gras started, but I don't think I'd ever go Alabama to Alabama is? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I, yeah. I, I don't know if I could I, ever. I uh, heard Mobile's got a good one. I, I'll i never go. I would rather go to Louisiana Mardi Gras instead of Alabama. But also on Mardi Gras Day, my family, we go to the race racehorses. Go watch the racehorses mm. at the track. <laughs> I don't know what it's called. Is it like derby? Uh, track. Derby? Like a Mardi Gras derby? I don't know. Huh. And it's really fun. Because I, I can bet. Well, I, I bet on horses. And all the horses' names are my favorite part. Is that horses. how you bet? Yes. <laughs> Have you ever exactly. won? Yes. Oh, good. Yes. <laughs> I go off of their names. And my dad advises me not to do that, but... <coughs> I don't care. <laughs> I'm pretty sure I remember one of them was like named Pickles, and I was like, absolutely. That is the one that I will vote for. I will bet on Pickles. Pickles sounds like a champion. It is. It is a champion name. It, has, it had the potential in the name. I don't remember if I won or not, but it was great. There's also some like butter oh, and wow. like all that stuff. I just remember. I did a project uh, uh, so before I did at sea work my core career was in television broadcast uh, and post-production facilities mm -hmm. building and operating those and I did a project for somebody who owned a racehorse that was in a race and he was contesting the outcome and I had to go testify before there's like a Horse Racing Commission. I forgot all about that until you talked about track. Huh. I remember watching like any racehorse movies when I was younger and just like crying almost at every single one of them. Like Seed Biscuit? Seed Biscuit? Flick, flicka? Or not race, that's not a racehorse one. Flip, flicker? Flicka? I don't know, I don't know that one. Like like Flicka. Flicka? Yeah, that was a really sad one. Also, Racing Stripes, where it was like a zebra racing against, <laughs> like, normal. <laughs> <laughs> that was also very emotional for me. I actually haven't seen that movie in a while. Wait. Racing Stripes. But there was a sequel. Oh, my God. Okay, That's I remember really that one. Oh, uh, was <laughs> Frankie Muniz was the voice. That's funny. Oh my god, this this was a baby zebra gets separated from traveling circus. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't I don't think I even knew this was a movie. It was a movie to me. I remember it was a movie to me. It was cinema. <laughs> it was cinema for me at Oscar worthy five. performance by yeah. Frankie Muniz as a zebra. Uh, uh, you know it's rated a five point two out of ten and that's that means really good. I love the tagline, chill, cheer till you're horse, but it's you are horse. It's <laughs> <laughs> really bad. <laughs> I don't care, did you? <laughs> this is literally, this was cinema. I'm not going to lie, I think when I think about racing, this is what comes into well, my mind. The flies, the talk. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Racing. 
it's like, look for it on DVD. <laughs> <laughs> Because it's the girl, you know, that, like, cares about the horse or whatever. Yeah, she's... That trope. The horse girl trope. Ho yeah, horse girl trope. <laughs> Look out, there it is. <laughs> oh, that even has a 6.0. I think I remember seeing a meme about, like, how people, someone should make a movie about a horse girl, like a traditional horse movie where the horse dies midway through, yeah. and then the girl <laughs> becomes a necromancer. They call it Necroprancer. Oh my god. Um, and then the tagline is, you can't beat a dead horse. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. Necroprancer. That is, that is great. I was, a, I was like a baby horse girl, and then I went to horse camp, and then I got allergic to something there, and then I had to leave horse camp, and I was like, oh, geez. Well, I was like, dang, I can't be a that ended that horse dream. girl anymore. But, no, yeah, another one of my pride was Spirit, with mm -hmm. the animated horses. I love the, the soundtrack to that. Oh, fantastic. It's a fantastic movie. What is, what, what is the other one? Black, Black Beauty, is that it? That's definitely yeah, a that's horse old. movie, yeah. Yes, well, there's I been a couple of remakes of it. I think, I think Kate Winslet did a voice in one of them, in the new one. Yeah, 2020. Yeah, I haven't seen that one. Which one did I? I think Ned I watched Stark this was one. in one. I watched this one. The Wait, did he die? In it? Probably. <laughs> the horse probably trampled him. Yeah, this looks like the to. one I, I watched. Actually, there are movies he hasn't died in, which is weird. It's like I feel like the movie hasn't ended. If he's still alive. <laughs> yeah, this is probably the one. What was it? Secretariat? Wasn't that another one? Secretariat? It, that is that a, was a horse. That is a movie. I don't know if it's about a horse, though. Uh, there was a horse that won the Triple Crown in 1976. Oh. Anyone old enough to remember 1976? Nope. Oh, well, it might have been 77. Oh, no. Called Secretariat. Hmm. I'm surprised I know John this Malkovich. Horse weird. movies. I didn't know he was in the horse I'm, movie. I'm impressed. I only have like maybe two I could rattle off. All I knew was Sea Biscuit. Let me let me see the cover of Sea that's, Biscuit. Um, that's um that's Toby McGuire, I think. While Hannah's looking up some more horse movies for us to discuss, <laughs> Sorry. I want to update. Get onto this anyway. <laughs> so, <laughs> We'll continue with the horses. Um, I just wanted to update some of our viewers about what's going on, where we're headed to. Um, this is our four to eight watch, and this is uh, one of our first blue water descends together. So we're having fun this morning. Um, but we are diving on Willard Seamount. And Mike, correct me if I'm wrong, but we're expected to hit bottom at around 5.30 this morning? Uh, yeah, that... Something like that, yeah. Okay, that's what I'm seeing on the dive plan. But this will be a 24-hour dive. And I'm excited for this one because when we reach um, the seafloor, we're going to be inside a canyon, is what I've heard. Yeah, so we're coming down in the middle of a canyon, um, kind of on like that sediment lobe. And then we're going to move over to the side of the canyon and come up the wall. So this is just amazing. Someone in the chat quoted my favorite movie, uh, saying my friend Flicka is from a movie that I really like. And it's just a really, biz really bizarre reference. I'm wondering if it was... Is that a horse movie? No, it's not. It's just, I thought I heard Hannah just something saying... Yeah, Flicka is a horse movie, but yeah, the really movie that I like is called Kiss Kiss Bang Bang. Oh, Robert man. Robert oh, what oh a gosh, great wait. film. Lana Del Rey That's so good. And so one of the characters <laughs> has a friend named Flicka, so someone wrote into chat, my friend Flicka, I'm just like, wow, that's such a random quote. Isn't Kiss Kiss Bang Bang set in San Pedro? Is that what I'm thinking of? No, that's all the usual uh, suspects. Never mind. Hold on. Hannah, what was that last movie? Oh, Homeward Bound? Oh, okay. That was, that's yeah. not a horse movie. It's not a horse movie, <laughs> but this was a fantastic movie. It's cute. Yeah. yeah. It's about these, fa these, horse, these horses. <laughs> 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 these animals going home. And they had, like, a cat. And yeah. it was a sassy cat. Yeah, was, Sally Field. Is it even in Aim Sassy? Oh, my God, it's called Sassy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that used to be one of my favorites. <laughs> so good, so good. But, oh my gosh, yeah, Kiss Kiss Bang Bang, that, that's literally Lana Del Rey. 
It's what? Lana Del Rey has a lot of songs about Kiss Kiss Bang Bang. How do you... I don't understand that. Lana Del Rey? Lana Del Rey? Yeah, I know that. I don't know how she has a lot of songs. She mentions this movie. Oh, really? Yes. Oh. Yeah, it's one of my all-time favorite movies. Oh my gosh. I need to watch it, though. It's, it's a sign now if it's been brought up and then... Also, Lana I don't think I've it. actually ever heard this movie. It's probably one of the best comedies ever it. filmed. Comedy? Yeah, it's a comedy. It's well, it's like it's like a dark comedy. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Robert Downey Jr. Huh? Yeah, I think that was kind of the start of his uh, his comeback. Comeback. Yeah. Thank you. Don't call it a comeback. Oh, he looks, he looks young. Hannah, someone suggesting that uh, Saddle Club, the series, Wait. was a horse school requirement. Did you watch that? Hold up. It sounds. I think. I feel like I heard of it, but I didn't know how to watch it. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I gave up being a horse girl when I was like six. Hmm. It happened. I, I had to give it up. It how did we forget dangerous. about War Horse? Oh my gosh. That one too. It's not a horse race movie. I know, but the horse movie. Yeah, I was only look, looking at like race. Huh. Okay, well, continue. Well, no, but War Horse is a good one. That's another saddle. Saddle Horse Club? Saddle Club. Oh. Yeah. Wait, let me see this. It went from 2001 to 2009. Oh, I remember this. This looks so cute. Yeah. How many episodes is it? 78. Wow, they're rated really high. The Saddle Club. Yeah, I think I would have enjoyed this when I was younger. <laughs> <laughs> I'm looking at all the thumbnails and this just looks like a soap opera. There's a horse racing movie with um, Zac Efron in it. What really? Is it? The Derby Stallion. <laughs> I've never heard of that. <laughs> the Derby Stallion. <laughs> yeah, but it's referencing him and not the horse. Horse cinema. Horse actors. Never thought we were going to get into this subject. I know. Uh, I was we sitting we were talking about Mardi Gras. I think how that happened, right? Yeah. I think we got there from Huddle House. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Waffle we were House. talking about breakfast. Wow. And cookies. That's what started <laughs> this. Amazing. Well, and breakfast cereal, I guess. Yeah. Cereal wow, that went. <laughs> black Beauty. <laughs> went to and Black Saddle Beauty. Club. Saddle Club, yeah. Reminds me of. Um, did y'all see that movie? Nope. Oh. Yeah. yeah. The reference was not to Kiss Kiss Bang Bang alone. Nope was. It was to a book called My Friend Flicka. Maybe that was. Maybe the movie's referencing that. I want to say something about that movie, but I also don't want to spoil it. Yeah, don't do that. I'm not. I was just because I do it believe it's marine it. science related. Yeah. The, the, yeah, yeah, you, you know what yeah, I'm saying, why yeah, I can't. Yeah. Unless we can tell everybody in the chat who has not seen Nope to leave the chat <laughs> temporarily. <laughs> no, we're I not going to do it that. For me. No, I was just saying, like, they talk of the main guy, he trains horses for acting. Like, he, he brings the horses on set. Mm -hmm. That's what I was going to say. <laughs> That was the last time I probably saw anything of like horses in it. That was um, that's from the movie Nope as well. Yeah, that's what that's I was what saying. Oh, I'm sorry, I was <laughs> distracted. Totally logged out. Yeah, I was trying to figure out uh, My this kiss, kiss, bang, bang thing. Yeah. Um, that movie was weird. Yesterday though. we were talking about movies that we watched a lot when we were younger. Yeah. And Pete's Dragon. Oh my God. Did you watch Pete's Dragon? I watched it only a few times, but it wasn't like my main like rewatch that was mine it rings a bell but i can't put an image to it pictures. it's been years yeah i remember i watched keeps oh. dragon along with dumbo i think at the same time mm. this you had both movies on at the same time wouldn't that be no, confusing no no no, no, no. Oh, okay i've seen like once or twice I but like, yeah like once or twice when i was really young I'm trying to think, a staple. Actually, I have a list of all 
my like childhood movie. <laughs> There's a movie that, like I have the image clear in my mind, but I cannot have the name. It was like the 1980s movie with this robot. Iron Giant? No, it's a robot, like it's live action. Oh, uh, Flight of the Navigator? No, but that was a good one. It is a good one, yeah. It's uh, a robot, like it's almost like a comedy. It's like, just, it's like the robot's cute and, uh, what's it called? Oh. I think Wait, it was did like you a robot? Oh, it was a robot. Uh, what the robot do? It wasn't Chappie. It was. Uh, it wasn't Chappie. Chappie's way too new. Uh, yeah, I know what you're <laughs> thinking of. And you said it was live action. Yeah. Mhm. Mm the robot had two tracks and. Uh, yeah, and then it was um, like. Wally. It wasn't nope. Wally, but it had like it, eyebrows. Almost. Yeah, but one of them no. was broken. Yeah. Yeah. Nope. Don't know this movie. Maybe I know this. Uh, short circuit. Short circuit. There you go. The viewer suggested that. Sure, I loved short circuit Wait, as a kid. I feel like I've seen this. It looks like Wally. It literally. Looks it was like the original Wally. Wally. Oh. Super cute. Oh. Oh my God. Okay. Yes. I haven't, I haven't seen it, but I can see how it could inspire Is that Wally. from the 80s? Yeah. yeah. Huh. 1986. All right. I think some of my childhood rewatches was Austin Powers, all three of them. Oh, Austin <laughs> Powers is a classic. Gosh. And Goonies. I Goonies think. is so good. I, I um, loved it. I, hadn't, I didn't see that until I was an adult. I'd, like, I'd heard of it, but I'd, I'd just not seen it. And um, my friend showed it to me. I was like, wow, this movie's great. <laughs> I loved it. We go into port sometimes in Astoria, Oregon, where that was shot, and you can go to the Goonie house there. Oh, that's fun. That's so cool. Yeah, I'm pretty sure at one point, me and my siblings could just, like, quote the Goonies. Oh, yeah. I've been to Gilligan's Island. I've never been. Yeah, it's Coconut Island in Hawaii. It's where um, Hawaii Institute of Marine Biology is. It's actually where it was filmed. Okay. Well, it's funny because when we were growing up, my younger brother must have seen it because he would go, hey, you guys. And I never knew why. I just thought <laughs> it was something that he said. <laughs> oh, so good. Earlier you were talking about Homeward Bound. Yes. And I loved it, but it got to a point where I, you know, was not really encouraged to watch it because I would just cry so hard. Yeah. But same so with, sad. like, what are the dog movies where it's, like, all the different sports and then they just, like, oh, Air Bud? Yes, just all Air of those Bud. movies. <laughs> yeah. Those Every version. Those are, those are, yeah. Those are Disney Channel original movies mm -hmm. at its peak. Air Buds. I was just, I had another, oh yeah. Basically anything with Jim Carrey too. The Mask. Oh yeah. Ace Ventura. Mm -hmm. Like any of those. Dumb and Dumber. Like, mm -hmm. yes, we watched them. The, yeah, his, his original like three movies are absolutely awesome, but. Then eh. we have a uh, part of the vessel here. Trust me, this is going to connect. Okay. Uh, uh, called the aft hold. It's the very aft most part of the vessel, and there's a hatch you have to go down, and it's I think it's a smaller hatch than all the others on the boat. You have to go down a ladder, and it's very very hot down there. And if you're down there working for a period, I'll usually uh, tell whoever I'm. Usually we go down there in teams with that before you go up that ladder to climb out, it's, you're going to look like Jim Carrey in Ace Ventura coming out of the rhinoceros. Ah, uh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> because it's kind of hard to get out of that hatch. <laughs> it's very hot. Oh my gosh. <laughs> also random one now, Mr. Limpet about a fish during World War II. What? No, what? I don't know this one. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know this one at all. <laughs> it's fun watching Hannah misspell stuff left and right. <laughs> I'm glad that entertains you. It really <laughs> frustrates me. Shouldn't there be a period in Mister? The Incredible yeah. Mr. Limpet. There should be, there but is. it's okay. Oh, this is from the 60s. Is Mr. Limpet yeah. a fish? He turns or into a fish. 
He turns into a oh, that makes much more sense. And he helps the Navy. <laughs> well. Who's the actor? Uh. Don Knotts. <laughs> It was so good to me. It was so good. He saved us. <laughs> <laughs> He's a meek and mild-mannered bookkeeper who turns into a fish. Yes. And then he has like a fish girlfriend. <laughs> <laughs> Named Dory. <laughs> he couldn't get a girlfriend on land, but he got a he got a fish girlfriend. Yeah. Oh, it was black and white. I don't remember. I think it was black and white. That this is a oh, color. Weird. I don't know. Maybe the sixties, like they just had black and white photos for the stills. But this is what the cover was. Wow. And he had the glass. I I was so confused how the fish why the fish needed glasses. Because <laughs> he's not wearing is he wearing glasses? Yes, he wears yeah. glasses. Okay, okay. But they like gave it to the fish and I was like, I don't get it. And so you can identify which fish yeah, is him. Which fish is him. Oh, that's weird. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Very strange. Very strange movie. <laughs> yeah, I've never heard of that. I feel like we also had a bit of like mermaid stuff going on. Um, what was it? The show? The H2O. H2O. And I remember the 13th year. 13th yeah, that's year. what I was just thinking. That was yeah. like my favorite. That was the favorite when I saw movie. that on Disney Channel. Yeah. I was like. Great day. Thirteenth year. I'm just sad that it didn't happen to me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I don't think we're ready for the conversation of what an accurate mermaid would look like. No, we're not. <laughs> <laughs> now what are you searching? Accurate mermaid. Oh jeez. Oh. This isn't yeah. going to go well. Yeah. <laughs> Make sure you have a safe search on. <laughs> well, these aren't all aren't accurate mermaids. Well, these are just. What does it look like? It's just like natural history drawings of mermaids. Yeah, which like. Is also disturbing. Theoretically, if a mermaid were a real thing, it'd look closer to a manatee than it would a human. Is that uh, something you've read somewhere? Or? Yeah. Oh, okay. Google is not making that connection. Nope. It was Google. a news article. This. Oh, there you go. Uh. <laughs> Has it uh, a turtle back? Or a turtle shell on his back? Weird. Weird. Might get a better one if you put scientifically after it, right? right? Oh. Okay. We've got about a thousand meters left to go. Let's see. Where did I see this? <laughs> oh, that's a literal one more way it feels scientifically accurate. Bless you. Hannah, your dad. Wait, um, yeah, he just... <laughs> wait, what did he say? Uh, one of his favorite shows was Mr. Limpet, and yes. he wants you to share about how you thought you were a mermaid. Oh, my God. <laughs> 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 Why would yes. he out me like that? Why would he out me like that? Oh, my God. Because you outed him you about outed Netflix. Yeah, oh his yeah. <laughs> payback. Hopefully he still has a job. Hold on, he's joining us now. Are you there? <laughs> just oh kidding. <laughs> that is so embarrassing. Oh my gosh. Okay. Um, we just discussed that we had a lot of mermaid content coming out. I you really, know? really, H2O really made me believe that I was. <laughs> 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 me and my friends, we thought that we were mermaids. Like, legit. Like, legit. I'm not even joking. Um, <laughs> you know how they would get affected by, like, the full moon? <laughs> no. Third wait, grade? wait. Wait, they are where mermaids? <laughs> They're in Australia. <laughs> what? <laughs> yeah. He said where mermaids, like. Wait. Where wolves? Are you talking about like where? Yeah, because I heard you say full moon. <laughs> yeah, 
Yeah, because like the full moon like affected their powers. Oh. And so it's Blair mermaids. <laughs> no. <laughs> I thought you meant like where were the mermaids? I was no, like, like they were in Australia. <laughs> like, like werewolves, but where where What was the name of the show? H two O. H two O just like water. Three <laughs> girls in Australia. Yeah. Who who were besties that were yeah. mermaids, oh, and they like discover. Yeah, I don't know. That wasn't Mako Mermaid. That was that's the sequel series. Oh, okay. <laughs> What's it called? Mako Mermaids is the sequel. Why series. have I never heard of this? Derek, you gotta keep this straight. Yeah. <laughs> well, my my son started watching oh. Mako Mermaids. I was like, okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. I love that. Okay. How's Mako Mermaids from the other? It doesn't have the OG cast, but huh. it has like the same like it's the same location and it's the same like process of how they got their mermaid powers. Hmm. Interesting. Yeah. But, yeah, so when I was in third grade, I was like, oh, my God, I am a mermaid. I can swim really well because I was, like, in year-round swimming. Mm -hmm. So I was like, oh, my God, this is it. And I, like, I really thought that I was going to get <laughs> the powers, like, an H2O. I was like, that's going to happen for me. And then, uh, yeah, so we, we would freak out about the full moon, like, as fun, like, <laughs> We were like, oh my god, like, we can't touch water. Also, one of my friends, my friend that I was, we thought we were mermaids, she bought a mermaid tail to swim with in the water, and I was so jealous. I was like, that is the coolest thing ever. I was, I there's adults it. who do that. Yeah, I was, yeah, yeah. I was yeah, diving. People are professionals. Yeah, yeah I was diving I in the spring in Florida, and there was, you know, little did we know there was a, like, a mermaid convention there, and yeah. it was really <laughs> awkward to be underwater while they were swimming above us. Like, that is so funny. My dad was like, payback. <laughs> <laughs> my, yeah, my dad said it was his favorite show, Mr. Olympic, because it was one of the first real life animation and wins the battle. Because we won World War II. <laughs> he said, I didn't even know you were on, but I was just listening, like, randomly. And I was like, well, yeah. That's so funny. Oh my gosh. Because if it was 1963, my dad wasn't, he was born in 66. So that makes sense why he, it would be like a childhood movie for him. Yeah. But here, actually, somebody, one time somebody told me that I looked like one of the girls from H2O <laughs> Mermaids. I'm not even kidding. And, made, and it made your day. No, it, it didn't, because I was like, I don't know if I really look like her. Wait, it should just add water. Ooh. Someone told me that I look like the girl with brown hair, and I was like, no, Clear. Clear. <laughs> her. I was like, no. But yeah, this this was also cinema to me. My sister rewatched it because she was too well, not too young, but like she didn't really remember it. So when she rewatched it, I would, she would like come in and talk about it, and I'm like, wow. The drama was always there, like top tier. So were the guys mermaids as well, or? Mm -mm. <laughs> no. Okay. <laughs> no, they were just they were just there for the plot. There was one guy named Lewis, and he would, like, he knew they were mermaids, and he tried to, like, help them, like, understand the full moon, like, and the powers thing. But, yeah. So were they not mermaids all the time? No, they weren't. Uh. Be only, because the whole thing of, like, just add water is because if they touch water at all, they would turn into a mermaid. Gotcha. What if they needed to drink water? They could drink it. <laughs> Well, is that touching the water? Well, probably a difference between fresh and salt water. No, actually, now that oh, I think okay. about it. Because when couldn't. they go into a bathtub, they, like, turn into <laughs> a mermaid. Yeah. That's but. a plot hole, then. Yeah. So someone just spills water on them, so they turn into a mermaid. you didn't mermaid. shower for, like, three years? No, no, I did, I did. <laughs> I was just uh, waiting for it to happen seven, to me. Right? 
It was just yeah. me thinking like it's I'm gonna come eventually. Yeah, let's let's change the subject. We only need to talk about my <laughs> yes, we do. Days. No, we don't. Um, I guess one of the books that was also really good was Emily Winsnap. I don't know if you heard of that. I don't remember that. So good. So good. My sister actually brought it How over. How do the dive numbers work? This isn't dive 2007, is it? Yep. Yep. This is the 2007th dive that her I, I question that as well, because apparently the first dive on Nautilus was 1,000, and yeah. that's... that's It's added by 1,000 for some reason. But, but they no. were diving before then. Well, yeah, so the... Herc was. Uh, yes. No, the Herc dive numbers started before Nautilus, actually, I believe. Well, they just celebrated the... 1,000th dive from Nautilus, and it was Dive Hotel 2000. So clearly they did a reset. Yeah, yeah. No, it started at H1000, that's right. But um, but I think, I mean, I, I think we started the, the Herc numbers before uh, before Nautilus started because right. we started the Diana dive numbers so when we used that in 2008. So I think Herc numbers started probably in 2006. Yep. I just think they did a jump when they got to Nautilus, but I could be wrong. Yeah, I don't believe so. And uh, it's funny, uh, one of our former ROV pilots, Will Sellers, would be asked frequently if this was the original Hercules. And he would say, yes, but it's kind of like this is uh, George Washington's axe. We've replaced the handle three times and the head twice. Let me double check that. But it's, we've changed so much of it. It's always being changed. Just changed the frame this off season uh, and the syntactic foam. I'm looking up why Lana Del Rey mentions bang bang. Kiss, oh, yeah. Kiss, kiss, bang, bang. There's a film where Bruce Willis yeah, is the right. uh, assassin that moves in next to Matthew Perry, the dentist. Matthew Perry was the dentist. Yeah. That was pretty good, too. I think also, I think The Mask was such a like great movie to me when I was younger, and I recently rewatched it, and it's still good. Like I was still <laughs> laughing with it. I haven't watched it in a long time, but I would yeah, same. watch it a lot. And actually, the uh, the Nautilus cruise numbers were um, were re were not reset, but they were backlogged. So we only started calling them NA numbers, uh, starting with four, and then we used to call the cruises C one thousand one with whatever research vessel we were on. But then, C so C one thousand seven eight or eight nine and ten turned into NA one two and three. Uh, and NA003 never happened. It was a Black Sea leg. And we, we sat in, with Nautilus, we sat in the middle of the Black Sea waiting for a permit from Ukraine that never came and then just went to, back to Istanbul and, uh, and flew home. So, but because there was documentation and cruise plans with C1003, I'm sorry, with C1009 or something, um, we called it a dive number or a cruise number. So. NA003 never really happened. But all the all the Herc numbers I think started I think we started using H numbers in uh, 2006. How long were you all sitting out there? Uh it was like 2 or 3 days and then we're like, yeah. oh, that's not bad. No, but we're just like this isn't going to happen so we we changed the plan. You least going to have a vacation in the Mediterranean? Yeah. I had a uh, 
couple expeditions booked on a boat in 2012 that broke, and the, it was like it was like a hundred days it got canceled. Oh wow. I did, I think, six years doing work out of uh, in uh, American waters off the west coast of North America. And the great part was for mobilization. I would just throw stuff from my garage into the back of my truck and drive down there. I still have uh, carpets in my garage that are made for stateroom 27 on an Agor 23 vessel. Really classes the place up. I know as soon as I throw them out, I'm going to get booked on that boat again. So Nor or Melville? Uh, that would be Thompson, Atlantis, Ravel, Brown. All four of those are the same. It's so weird on the new vessels, the ladders that you go up and down between the decks, they're kind of like office building stairwells. So you go up and there's a landing and then you turn 180 and go up another set of uh, steps to get to the next deck. So it's, it's difficult to maintain your bearing as to which way you're facing on the vessel. And uh, they, uh, also have elevators between the main deck and uh, the next deck up. That's uh, Armstrong and... Uh, Armstrong, Ride, Sekuliak are ADA compliant. One of my colleagues uh, on the Sekuliak and the mess hall is one deck up, would always take the elevator, <laughs> like just because they had it. And it took forever. We'd be eating before you show up. I don't think I ever rode in that. Just the thought of being in an elevator on a boat seems more creepy. So we're at 1,900 meters, about 600 left to go, I think. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, we're making time. Yeah, we'll have some time on bottom of this watch. I cannot So just for awareness, uh, we're a little bit in a different position than the waypoint one, so we'll be starting we're at about a depth of 2,470 meters. Oh, okay, yeah, that's fine. Wait, 20... 2470. Oh, yeah. Close enough. Um, yeah, so I, I'm sure you know this, Derek, but um, Rennie was talking to me, the, the, and just so the rest of you guys know, the, we're going to be coming down on like a sediment lobe at the end, uh, outflow of a, a can submarine canyon, uh, but then the, like t t up to waypoint two is going to be really steep. Yep. Um, so we're going to go real slow and take our time. Um, and then once we get up to waypoint two, it's going to be more like a ridge survey, like the last couple of dives. But the first waypoint is going to, yeah, just really slow and going to be a lot of uh, hauling in on, on the winch. I love submarine canyons. Well, we're diving in one. I know. <laughs> I just realized I did a whole project on submarine canyons. So this is not the type that's like formed from excising of, a, of an old river like you find you know, coming off the shelf yeah, in California. No. This is for this is off of a a submarine or a seamount and a canyon that way. It's more like a. I'm not sure really, but it, I don't know if it was ever subaerial. But it does look like it, doesn't it? It does look like it's a uh, tributaries like feeding into it. Mm -hmm. um, Are you talking about like? Yeah, all those little branches. Yeah. Um, 
So sorry, why, why do you love Submarine Canyons? They just have a special place in my heart because, okay. of, because of that. Because of what? Because of, because of my project. That oh, because of your project, that's right, yeah. Well, we expect you to be an expert in all the geology of the Submarine Canyon. No. Mine was related to track. faulting, so downhill, I don't know about downhill, this. This downhill. was like basalt. This is like volcanic. Mine was due to fracture zones in, yeah, off the coast of uh, San Diego. So no, I, I unfortunately will not, but I'm excited to see the igneous version of it. Fair enough. And plus it looks, well, I guess obviously, but compared to everything else, it's gonna look pretty deep. I imagine we're gonna see a lot of um, like debris, like mm -hmm. rocks that have fallen just off. Oh yeah. Of it. Are those worth sampling? Yes. I okay. Yeah. You want to sample the ones that aren't in place anymore? Yeah. <laughs> okay. I think I think so. I think so. <laughs> I think so. <laughs> Channel your H2O mermaid accent. I wish. I wish I had a good Australian accent. <laughs> The only one that I can say is like nar. <laughs> nar? Nar. I don't even know if I'm saying that right. Oh, the Sorry, way they Australian the way they say no. Yeah. No. It's like N A U R. Yeah. <laughs> nar. <laughs> oh, nar. Now I know what you. Oh nar. <laughs> oh nar. <laughs> I don't know what I'm you're so saying. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry, Australian people. I'm I so think sorry. that's more of a New Zealand no. Yeah. Yeah, let me take a look at I'm my I'm going to get you a things. glass of water, and then we're, you're going to have to talk about Australian accent for the rest of the uh, watch. No. <laughs> what computer I, is that on? Nar. 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 You do that nar. well. Cause you stand by. I can't say it that way. <laughs> nar. Nar. That's H2O. You've definitely been practicing. So was it? Were they New Zealand actresses? No, they're they're Australian. Oh, okay. Tell me that computer name <laughs> again, <laughs> Data. <laughs> no. And be proc two, right? Hi. Oh man. Uh, so on satellite channel three. We've got a navigation screen up. That's not it. This is it. Where we can see. Uh, oh, yeah, that's cool looking. Yeah, there you go. All yours, Nav. Sorry, I called you data. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so uh, you can see the dive track here in sort of more of a 3D view. Um, so, yeah, we're first starting down at kind of the bottom of this canyon, steep slope. Uh, be working our way up this very steep. If you uh, look at these contour lines, we're crossing quite a few. Um, these are 10 meter. Oh. The darker ones are 100 meter. And then once we get up to the top of this this ridge, we're kind of just moving along the ridge system up to the summit. And then once we're at the summit, we'll just be kind of jumping from these little... Uh, it's, it's pretty much... It's an interesting mountain. Just, it's got the peak here, but you know, not much difference along this whole ridge. So we're just going to explore that whole high section of the seamount and end over here. So and what's the elevation rise to the seamount? Like 1,100 meters? Um, let's see. Let's take a look at the dive plan. moving all the way up to... I'm not sure the dive plan actually says that. 1550? Oh. oh, it does, never mind, yep. 2D for sharks. So, 1,000 meter vertical. 
So yeah, close cool. over 3,000 feet. So Mike, is like strokes your sub interest? Or? Yeah, one of them. I, yeah, I got really interested in the uh, like the small cat sharks that were off of uh, Southern California. And so when we saw, I think we identified those lantern sharks um, on our first dive, I was like, oh, <laughs> so just looking out for them. See if, see if we can get enough information to maybe expand their known depth ranges. Did you see those sharks during recovery yesterday? Yeah. We also saw a chimera, which is close enough. Oh, that's right, we did see one. Not close enough. It's called the Close enough. Not close enough. It has cartilaginous bones. Mike, what's a shark that you have not seen that you want to see? Um, like, have you seen a tiger shark? I've seen a tiger shark. I was diving uh, in the Marshall Islands uh, a couple of years ago. Uh, and a juvenile came by when we were on the deco bar, which is crazy. Oh, uh, uh, there's, there's a, uh, were you in Quadge? No, Bikini. Uh, there's a really cool shark dive in Quadge. Oh, so you're just hanging out at 15? Yeah. Yeah. Um, I'd like to do cage diving with great whites. When you say juvenile tiger shark, how big? Oh, uh, like 8 to 10 feet. <laughs> yeah. No thanks. Yeah, um, it, it was it was pretty. It was amazing, but also just like oh crap, because <laughs> it I just it just it kind of appeared out of the blue, just like the the uh, Argus video. And you're just like oh my gosh, uh, but it just kind of swam cl like up, and I mean it stayed like 50 feet away, like it wasn't, and it was never at close to us. And then yeah. it just kind of you know went away. Um, there were plenty of like reef sharks and stuff around, but that was the only time we ever saw that. Uh, I think thresher sharks are pretty cool. Mm. I'd like to see whale, and dive with whale sharks too. Like, in the wild. Yeah. Have you ever seen whale sharks? I've seen them yeah. at the Georgia Aquarium in Atlanta. Um, but I'd like to see them, yeah, in the wild. Yeah, the Georgia Aquarium has live streams for a few of their different yeah, tanks, yeah. so my students will watch that sometimes. That aquarium is amazing. It, it's huge. It's huge. I did the background tour of the big tank. Yeah, me too. That was like, it's insane how big it is. It's, it's, that aquarium is so impressive. Like, they have Where? so much. In Atlanta, they have Georgia Aquarium. It's absolutely massive. I wish it was a little less touristy feeling, but. Yeah. I got a great t-shirt from it. It was a. <laughs> Whale shark saying, don't krill my vibe. <laughs> they don't eat krill. <laughs> it's cute. <laughs> don't krill my vibe. But yeah, the tank is gigantic. Gets up to 52 degrees. Yeah, it's definitely going to get some vertical in there. You can see a profile on stream three of the dive track, so we're starting down at the far left. Oh, it's not stream three anymore. Okay. That was short-lived. Yeah. I was doing some beautiful pans and zooms <laughs> for myself. Yeah. Oh, don't worry, I can see it. You had one viewer. <laughs> I have a whale shark. What? <laughs> That's what we've just been talking yeah. about. They I've have multiple. You can go scuba diving in there. Yeah, right we. I haven't done it yet, but I want to. Um, yeah, so they have a tank with whale sharks and manta rays. Is it still the biggest tank in existence? No, I think there's a bigger one. Well, it broke, I think. No, it didn't break. The one in Saudi or whatever. Oh, that one broke. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, there was a bigger one over in the Middle East somewhere. Wasn't the um, uh, where was it? In Japan? Might have been. I'm not sure. Okinawa Aquarium. China. 13 million gallons of water. I feel like at that point a gallon is a inaccurate <laughs> measure. Wow. 
Yeah, I want to know how many Olympic sized swimming pools. Exactly, that's better, yeah. Okay. You said how many million? 13, 13 million? 13 million. Wow. But the, uh, oh, you figured that out. the Atlantic Aquarium is the biggest in the in the US. I'm not sure this Google has there. a conversion for that. And, uh, how many gallons <laughs> of water? Well, you just do 13, plus million, 13 million divided by this yeah. number. Yeah. I know, but I'm saying there isn't just like So it's like Swimming probably pool. about 20, 20 Olympic pools. Yeah. 660,000 gallons in an Olympic sized swimming pool. I think like there's also like a, I believe the amount of feeding and like actual like food for the wells was like in tons per day. Jake, did you Google that number? Was that I just, did, I Googled okay. it. Okay. I was oh, not. No, that no was I Googled it. I thought I know. Hannah I has it pulled up, and I was like, where did Jake get the number from? <laughs> yeah. We all have the power at our fingertips. Isn't Google incredible? <laughs> How would you have found that out back then? Make it up. Make Nobody would have known. I don't know. Now you can't make up stuff Guess anymore. The volume like, of the pool. I'm going to fact check you. Oh, the okay. Depth, the length. What is the longest time spent in a pool? <laughs> 36 hours. And 19 seconds? Yeah. Endless pool. Longest continuous swim. Oh, I was going to say, uh, I could I could hang out like floating in a pool, but I don't want to continually swim. <laughs> a counter current pool. What is that? So he swims but doesn't go anywhere? Oh. Uh, that sounds exhausting. For how many hours? You said 30, 36. 36 and 19 seconds, no minutes. There have been people who have been setting records um, scuba diving. Like, the one guy was, like, off Egypt, was underwater for, like, seven days. I was like, that's, that's tiring. I would not want to swim for 36 hours. No, that sounds exhausting. Yeah, your tail would get tired. <laughs> <laughs> I'm never going to let that go. Never gonna let that go. And now I want to go to the Georgia Aquarium. Yeah, totally. I need to go back there. There's like a cool, like several cool museums and the aquarium, like in a short walking distance of each other. Yeah, Coca-Cola museums across the street. I wouldn't need to go there. Can you get ices there? I haven't been there. <laughs> <laughs> we didn't go. <laughs> the aquarium minds want to know. I don't know if you heard me, Hannah, but there are live streams that you can look at. So there, like, you can watch the sea lions, the penguins, oh. the tank with the whale sharks. That's nice. I might mm -hmm. put that on the background when I do something. Okay, about 100 meters to go. 100 meters to go. I don't know if the Coca-Cola Museum has ICs, and that seems like a missed opportunity right there. <coughs> I think we may have picked, maybe picked up bottom. You got beams. Yeah, we do. Yep, got beams. All right, I'm seeing 35. I'm going to start slowing down. And I'm going to. How could you tell, Jake, that we picked up bottom? We have an altimeter that sends sound straight down on the vehicles mm. based off of the, the time it takes for it to hit the bottom and come back. We can tell uh, how deep we I'm are. I'm all how, stopped at 25 high meters. We are. And I've got bottom in sight. There we are. Yeah. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Yippee. All right. I have this slope behind me.
feel like to get better at Australian, I need to like keep watching Australian things. You have to watch H two O over and over and over and over. Crocodile Dundee. Crocodile Dundee. Yeah. Okay. My sister loves the Irwin TV show, like mm -hmm. Life of Irwin, the Irwins. Mm -hmm. I feel like I need to start watching that. There's bottom inside on ROV. Where are we going to be heading? We're so close. It's steep. Sorry, I'm not getting you. It's two steep. two zero. Two two zero. Steep, steep. So let's see. We're diving in a submarine canyon that's like at the s northern end of what's called the Woolard Seamount. So we're finally on a named seamount again, not an unnamed one. Uh, we just got to where are we at a depth of 2,400 meters. Um, and we're going to be transiting, well, this initially we're going to be transiting very steep upslope um, and then going along a ridge towards the summit of the seamount. So it's a bit of a submarine canyon, a bit of a seamount. All right, look at the... Look at those rocks. Wow. Ready a sponge in sight? Nope. I think there's probably too much downward I movement. I literally oh, there's think there's a there's sponge. There's literally oh, a there sponge. is. I said, but, but I said no. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Except it's right there. <laughs> so Hannah, did you want one of these rocks, or Not do you want to you want to look around yeah. a bit? We'll so we'll yeah, let's poke around a little bit at this bottom here. Okay. Um, we'll at some point we'll take a rock and we'll probably try a sediment core, and then we can start transiting up to waypoint two. Ed, do we want to white balance? We or? do want to white balance once you're set up and ready. All right. One second. I guess for me, the reason why I'm not sure about actually taking a sample now is I hope that they're not attached, but we can we can tap them. They're not. I mean, most of these wouldn't yeah. be. I think a lot of it's tumble. Point oh. balance. Recall. Down lights on, right? Yeah. It is on? You want it on, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah they're yep. all the same yep. color temperature. Yep. That's good. good. Let me try it. Exposure 80. Up, 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 up. Can you get a slight bump up? That's good. All right, I'm going to go ahead and black balance the camera. This is going to make the camera go dark for about eight seconds. Starting now, this is intentional. Where's that lens? Everybody forget. Is it all right to send position? Uh, yeah, it's all right. Good black balance. Go ahead and white balance. Store that. Coming out. Great. Thanks so much. Yep. No problem. Oh, I think I see an acorn worm right in the sediment down there. Yep. I love the white tape thing. Hmm? I love the white tape thing. The white balance. We pull it and a cucumber. Out. Oh, yeah. yeah.
What was the first thing you said you saw? An acorn worm, I believe, is right above above the cucumber. Oh, they, oh yeah. yeah. Ooh, can we zoom on that? Oh. That's my favorite non-shark animal. Yeah, we were talking about him yesterday. What's that serpentine thing? Oh, that's a Holothorian uh, dump, isn't it? He might be dead. It yeah. might be. It's not very purple. R.I.P. Alright, go for Jill. Oh. Go on in. Oh no, he's alive. Okay. Just just not purple. Yeah. Well that's good. Do they like to bury themselves or is that just sediment? Um that's they just like to the set um top of the sediment. So I think that's the sediment that sprinkles on top of it. They don't exactly move much. They are from the phylum Entropenusta, which is a very separate file from all the other invertebrates. So it's not necessarily related to a starfish or an actual worm. Um, they're kind of weird little mm -hmm. classification. You guys ready to put in a ship move? Mm -hmm. Yeah, are we ready to put in a ship move and start um, moving? Or do you want us to look for a rock here? Well, let's... um. Derek, where did you want to go first? Where did you want to move this up to first? Uh, I'm looking at high pack. I kind of want to contour around to this place where it says first bearing. Yeah, I was going to say this. Let's let's move in that direction, and we'll do a we'll look for a rock in, on the way. Yippee! Um, since right. Hannah doesn't like it here, it's <laughs> good. Yeah, because I think we we're, we're going to have rock and sediment there too. All right. Bridge nav. Can we please track a line at bearing 227? Two, 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 uh, uh, 0 0.3, please. Thank you. Hannah, why would we want a rock um, from this canyon area instead of like up towards the any of the ridges or like the summit? What could we learn from these rocks? Um, I think I just want it for sample reasons. I think I know this is probably a debris flow, so it came from some other place, but it's still worth trying yeah. to get it at, the, at, at such a ground level, so, or at least at the lowest point. Well, I guess it's not the lowest point, but towards the bottom of so we're going to be starting to move upslope. Did you want to wait, or do you want to get it sooner? Mm -hmm. well, we can go to where you were describing okay. the first place. Sounds good. We're doing that. Yeah. Are you thinking, like, along the ridge, um, as we start going up the slope, some of those rocks are not going to be, like, separated, and they might just be part of the lava flows and won't be able to take those samples? No, I think some of them will be separated like normal, but I think since we're in like a canyon, basically anything that's like fallen could be from anywhere up top. So it's still worth trying to see if anything good comes from it. So I've been trying to read up a little bit about Willard Seamount, and I see that in 2014, the seamount was mapped by RV Falcor, um, but there was not a, a dive exploring the area. Okay. So it's been mapped. And That's we're down probably here. where it got its name from. Yeah, and I was trying to actually figure out like where the name come from, and it looks like uh, it was named after Hawaiian geologist George Willard, <gasps> who's the first Ooh. director oh, yeah. of what's now the Hawaii Institute of Geophysics and Planetology. 
H-I-G. Do you recognize that name, George Willard? Um, the name to? does sound familiar. I just couldn't put an exact place to it. I think there's another seamount in this area named Wentworth Seamount. That yes, was that named familiar. after Chester Wentworth. The Wentworth Seamount chain is also very important for one for my research topic. Oh, he looks so sweet. <laughs> my gosh. He's an artist. Probably not. <laughs> <laughs> I just looked up some random dude named George Willard. <laughs> hey, Lisa's getting free PR. Yeah. Okay, let me be more specific. Would you add to your search? Geologist. Geologist. <laughs> <laughs> it is. Actually, I'm not sure if it is him, actually. Wait. Well, the lays indicate that it's him. Um, so I was right, okay. He, is, he's a, he looks like a cute old man. Maybe he was also an artist. He was also, well. Or, or not. No, oh, there's another acorn worm. You can edit his Wikipedia page to make him an artist. Where's the acorn worm at? It's right there below the lights right now. Yeah. Okay. The lasers. I, I will keep on calling them lights. We can turn the lights off. That'll make it easier for you to remember. <laughs> <laughs> so you can see the trail it leaves behind as it goes through the sediment and processes it oh. for detritus. These ones are not as pretty as the usual ones. <laughs> no presume? Go on in. So Sebastian, are those um, similar to um, sea cucumbers? Um, in terms of niching, as in like the types of food and stuff, yes. But they are they're their own phylum compared to all other invertebrates. Mm. They're literally, when you look them up in the, in the database, they're under Animelia other. <laughs> That's cool. Um, they're kind of, they're very weird, is how I describe them. There's some research done on them, but like, people often forget their thing in terms of thinking about invertebrates. Looks like Hercules I is like about them. to enter a portal in the Atlantis screen. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Don't go any further. <laughs> That's a cool shot. I know, I'm yeah. highlighting it. Yeah. I like it. That's kind of what you'll see with sea cucumbers. Like you'll see that trail of sand that they. Yes. What is a good word for that? Excrete. Excrete yes. 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 It, out. It's not beneficial cool. to eat rock, so they're just digesting everything around the rock and then letting the sediment go. And they said they don't move around a lot, so how long do you think it's taken for that acorn worm to make that little path that we're at? Probably a couple days, honestly. Wow. Oh, didn't we have what looks to be a bamboo coral, maybe? Is that moving? Is so that apparently, a shrimp? Is a shrimp. apparently, uh, acorn worms secrete iodine, so they have an I I iota form like smell to it. Wonderful. Yeah. Is that so what gives them gross. their hue? They're like purple hue. I don't think so. 
I think there's a mo there's multiple different colors that they can be. They're related to tube worms, but don't live in tubes anymore. Uh, tube worms are annelids. Edger produced sets of vilum. Hmm? What? Two worms are annelids. Phylum annelidia. Edger produced are a completely separate phylum. Well, I don't mean tube, like the hydrothermal vent I just mean tubed worms. Pterobranchia. Still should be Analydia. Okay. Oh, and that me. That one looks more purple. I want to touch it so badly. <laughs> <laughs> um, one of the grad students in my lab did her own entire undergraduate thesis in acorn worms. Oh, that's cool. Was it published in the Journal of Acorn Worms? I mean, clearly. The, the journal of acorn worms. Front cover of nature. Yep. They're kind of bigger than what I expected them to be. I read that they can range from like less than a centimeter to over two meters. Wow. Also, I just heard Daniel come in, which is my cue that I have a ship to short six. Um, All right. I have been reading the memorial oh, to oh George my gosh. Willard. What? what? So have I. Yeah. Oh, I thought you guys were on the same screen. <laughs> no, 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 we've just been sitting here reading. Um, I've literally take a look it. at it. Definitely highlight some of the stuff because he just so sounds cute. like an amazing person. <laughs> and yes. there's a bit in here about um, when he first started out in the field of geophysics, he mm -hmm. suffered some severely from seasickness. And yeah. there's a remedy in here that I've like never heard of before, but. In addition to the bit about seasickness, like just paw print. amazing stuff so far in here. It's like a paw yep, print. Right there. Like Bam. Maybe a bear. Yeah, must be a bear it's, around it's here. It's a sea bear, for sure. <laughs> sea bear. It's a new species. Sea bear. We have to sing the campfire song. Oh. And I've seen with no shortage of uh, marine geologists, marine biologists who get seasick. I am one of them. Really? Looks, uh, I got sick like the first day. Nice. <laughs> I had to go nice. lie down too. Huh. Usually, usually if I can, like after the first day when I've slept, then then my body like resets. But I'm sure since we've been mostly motionless because the weather's been really good and we've just you know, mostly been on our ROV stuff, uh, it'll pick up again when we transit back to Honolulu. It's here. I do not want to go back. Oh. <laughs> well, um, I also, you. Mike, I do stand corrected. There are um, the pterobranchia is indeed a hemichordate. So, okay. Yeah. I was right. I was just reading website. I I don't have any particular dog in the fight, <laughs> but yeah, it's it's uh, the way that these are divvied up sometimes is confusing. Yeah, they change all the time. <laughs> also, there was a whole talk between Upshana and Virginia about the placement of plexurids, corals. Apparently, the whole family's been moved or something. There's another one. There's a lot of acorn worms here. I love it. Makes sense. A lot of these sediments and slopes have a lot of tridal input. Yeah. So we're going at 0 0.3 knots. If you want to speed up, let me know. No, that sounds good. We, um, once we, yeah, I mean, we're, I think we'll kind of stop the ship in the first bearing target area and uh, look for a loose rock and 
Let's see, we'll test Jake's uh, sediment core abilities. I don't, Jake, you haven't done one this cruise, right? Nope. Yeah. We'll all be watching. No pressure. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's, it's notoriously difficult to keep don't, the set. Don't blame me if the sediment isn't good. No, it's absolutely not. <laughs> I mean, the one time we did get sediment this attack the left during oh, the no, dive. That's a rock. Okay. What's that? <laughs> the time we got sediment. Yeah, a successful one, and it just left during the ascents. <laughs> yeah. Wasn't even the fall yeah. of the. They're just finicky in general. They're tough. We had a push core once uh, on our ascent, just flung itself out of the quiver and just went off into the into the void. Yeah, you can even see evidence of the acorn worms with the little trails. Mm -hmm. Maybe if we jump back further, it spells something. <laughs> Probably along the lines of get off my lawn. <laughs> I think it's spelling N O A R. Nar. 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 <laughs> Sandy corns. I saw a fish. It was barely visible, though. Another sea cucumber. They've all been that sort of like pale purple in this area. It's really common in deep sea um, hotherians to develop yeah. the color purple. I'm not sure why. There's something up there. That's a rock coming on. Uh, is that another hemicordate? Or is that something coming off the rock? What, this thing? Yeah. No. Oh, to, the what? to the right, right. You can kind of see the shadow on it, right? I see it. Just to the right lasers? Yeah, right, right there. Right there. Can't make out what it is. I can do a quick zoom it's from here dark. if you want, Jake. Is it a sediment discoloration or. What uh, is this? It's a coral. It's a coral. Can we get a zoom, please? Yep. It's a single stocked. So, not sure if we have our uh, coral biologist logged in yet. Go for zoom. No, I did not see that. No, <laughs> in. I had three shadows. You probably saw that from, yeah, you saw that from the shadow, I think, more than the yeah. coral. It's an octocoral. I'm not sure what species. A candy cane. I'm going to guess a bamboo maybe, but I can't see the base either. But take some notes of it. We'll probably see it again. White with red polyps. I don't see the, oh, I see it. Okay, yeah, it's bamboo. Yes, it's bamboo. Oh yeah, very light. Uh, stalk striations. I think it's a baby. Definitely new. Thank you. You betcha. Hopefully we'll be seeing a variety of sediment feeders. Also might be a good spot to see some evidence of beaked whale activity. Because they go down to the sediments and sift through them and leave marks on the seafloor. I'm not sure I've seen that happen on slopes like this before, but maybe we'll see it. Maybe. Uh -huh. 
reefed whales are so cute. They're very, very, very rare. They're very open to going and deep diving. They typically actively avoid chips. Okay, then we're probably How deep, um, Sebastian, do they dive? down there? Um, that white there. just under the lasers now. Oh. Bottom of frame. Bottom of frame. Uh, I'm not sure. Just going out of frame. Uh, Whoop, there it goes. See that? Yeah, or I this? see it. Uh, left, uh, yep, that. Oh. I'm not sure what that is. Looks like it might just be a small sediment oh, pile. Looks like a deposit of sediment. Then there's right. something on the rock up here at the top. I think they're anthomastis, possibly. Is that rock? Is that a cucumber? You like a look at it? Um, yeah, let's do a quick little zoom. Oh no, it's a rock, it's a rock, right? It's a rock. Moving on. Yep. Thank you, though. But that's something. That might be a sea pen. It's funny, it always says that Virginia's online, but I know she's not. That's, I noticed it was doing that with me. Yeah, we had a conversation with her apparently, and she's like, she's not sure why it shows her as online. Unless she has a secret thing where she stays up all night watching us. No, nor, I don't no. think so. Nor. Nor. That was better. Are the Australians awake yet? I assume they are. I know. Uh, Timeanddate.com, I'll tell you. But I, I appreciate Australians. I'm sorry for... No, they are not awake. It is two in the morning. Okay, but I'm usually awake at two in the morning. Yeah, for this. No, not for this. Normal. I think that's called insomnia. Nocturnal. Vampire. I, I think insomnia is correct. Weird geologist. Mermaid. Yeah. Rocks don't sleep. Rocks don't eat breakfast either. I wouldn't want to be a rock. Yeah, they have good taste. Oh my gosh, you're crazy. They don't eat mushrooms either. Yeah. True, true. The rushes grow on them. Well, maybe not these ones. Unless you count the mushroom corals, which are. Which we don't. Yeah. <laughs> You guys want me to speed up a little bit? Um, I think this is a good speed. Yeah, this is fine. Speed. Another acorn worm. We stop and look at something. Mm -hmm. I don't think it catches up to us. Okay. Trust me, I'm keeping out my eye out for other things besides acorn worms right now. It's just a little bit of a struggle. <laughs> I want the acorn worms to be more purple. Well, you saw one that was purple. Was that enough? Yeah, purplish. Wasn't as vibrant as the ones I saw before. I was looking at the guide, and there's like some that are like actually like pretty cool. Like this one is like almost like silvery. Oh yeah, that's cool. You see, it, Anna. Oh. <laughs> I don't not, like them. Not a fan. No. <laughs> We're 
ringworms freak me out. Mm -mm. I had ringworm once and I was like, I'm like still scarred from it. I'm not I sure if ringworms it. count as worms. I'm not sure acorn worms count as worms. They don't. <laughs> ringworm is like a fungal infection, I think. I hate it. I hated it. I hated it. I hated it. <laughs> Another Anthemastis. Is that, uh, is that a mushroom coral? Yeah, I yep. think so. Yep. Something else over there. Sea, sea oh yeah, pen. I see something right there. It's like a sea pen. Yeah. Uh, Let's hope that we don't summon up Shauna of the word of sea pen. Or else we'll have it. Samalia, is there a Hawaiian word for worm? Oh. I'm not sure. I know that we do have um, terrestrial worms. Um, in regards to deep sea worms, I'm not sure. I'll have to look that one up. Yeah. Is there any for sea cucumbers? Yes. So a sea cucumber is known as a lole. A lole. L-O-L-E, lole. Lole. I like that one. Yes, it's simple to say. Oh, shrimp. Yeah, it moved, it moved when I touched it. You felt your touch through the skin. Yeah. I thought it was a uh, jelly first. Is that fish? Yeah. Tripod fish, maybe? Maybe. Let's get a zoom. Oh, yeah. Oh, that's a good shot in the still camera. Oh, yeah. Ooh. Yeah, it is a good shot in the still camera. Go for zoom. Fun in. 